Okay, MCT4C, day 57. Welcome to day 57. Uh, the lesson is 6.3, solving polynomial equations that have a specific form, and we'll get to that in a bit. The goal today uh, uh, for the three-minute review is to evaluate expressions involving rational exponents and radicals. So this is a bit of review of unit four, I guess, when we were dealing with exponents, but this one no calculator, square root of 25 is 5 because we just want to find a number uh, that times itself is the thing underneath. So the fourth root, remember, is a number times itself four times to get 81, and it's 3. And if I can do it without a calculator, it's always going to be something that works out nice. When I have a fractional exponent like this, one of the things we covered in the exponents chapter is that that it means... 1 over 5, the fifth root to the exponent 1, right? And usually we don't write the exponent 1, but the fifth root of 32 is just 2. Um, and that's what rational exponents meant. We learned that earlier. Uh, evaluate using a calculator. Uh, the square root of 78. A couple of different types of calculators. This is one of the old school calculators where if you put in 78, and then you have to hit your root button. There's my root button, 8.83. By the way, that makes total sense because 8 would be 64 and 9 would be 81. It's pretty close to, to 9, just like 78 is pretty close to 81, so that makes sense. Um, the new scale, uh, school calculators, I don't really have a, a version of a new school, uh, school calculator, um, but except for the graphing calculator, and the square root is right there, so it would be, I have to press second function root, and then 78 and equals, not 77, 78 and equals, and it'll give us the same answer, um, and that's all good. Where it starts getting tougher is when we do these other roots, so this is the seventh root of 100. Some, some number times itself, seven times, it, it gives us the answer of 100, and how we do it on this, on this old school or this new school calculator, right, is it, we put it in somehow, it, it reads exactly the way we're going to put it into the calculator. So the 7 goes in first on the new school calculators. And so I'm going to put in 7, and then i got to look for my root button. It's like the xth root or nth root um, on your calculator. It'll look either like that, or perhaps like in this case, it looks like this. And on the graphing calculator, it's actually in a menu. It's in the math menu, and then I go down the x root of 100. 100, not, not 110. And then I press Enter, and I get 1.93. So what does that mean? That means 1.93 times itself, 7 times, is going to give me 100. And notice, I'm going to... I'm going to write my steps there. I went 7, and then I hit that button. I think most of you would have to press second function, and I think it's usually over your exponent button. Not always, but it's usually over your exponent button to get to that key, and then you press 100, and then equals. Okay. Uh, this one's easier to put in in either calculator because this one is... Just 1.23 to the exponent one quarter. The only thing you got to be careful about is to get your exponent. That's the exponent button on the graphing calculator. Get your exponent in brackets. Okay. Get it in brackets. So if you leave the brackets out, it's going to mess up on you. So put them in brackets. Either this calculator or the old school calculator, and I get one decimal zero five three. It might have been your instinct, by the way, folks. It might have been what you wanted to do is to do this a different way. You might have wanted to change this to the other style, right? The, the roots in the same as the rational exponents, right? 100 to the exponent 1 over 7. And maybe you like putting that, that, in, for, that, that in better to your calculator. We know it's a calculator question, so you can choose how you're going to do it. Same thing. Same thing here. If you don't like using the brackets in the exponent, you could type in this, right? These mean the same thing, and you get to choose uh, whichever way you would like. Okay, on to the uh, 
lesson today. The lesson today actually compared to the stuff we've been doing lately is pretty short. It's pretty easy. Solve equations in in this form, this specific form where it's x to some exponent equals some number. Now, sometimes we'll, we'll, it'll be a little bit different where you actually have to rearrange this. There might even be a number in front. But this idea of some power of x equals a constant. We're going to be solving equations like this. So notice here, um, how do I get rid of the square? I just square root, right? That's what I do it to both sides. Square root both sides, and I get 6. The problem here is I've made an error. I've made an error because there's actually two solutions to this. I see if I put 6 in here, 6 squared is 36, but also... Right? Because if I think of negative 6, negative 6 squared is also 36. Right? And that's a bit strange. This is looking for for answers answers to this question, there are two solutions. Note, folks, that normally this line right here, we wouldn't write down. It's okay to skip right to this, this line, and usually we'd write it just as positive or negative 6, which is fine. Um, well, why is there two solutions? Well, again, because this works, but also think of the, think of the, the graph. If I think of the graph of y equals x squared, this is y equals x squared, move that so you can see it, y equals x squared, then I want to know when is this equal to 36? Well, there's two spots, isn't it? There's one over here that's positive 6, and there's one over here that's negative 6. Two solutions. So notice, when I'm solving this, if n is even, there are two solutions. Positive and negative nth root of a. I can just take the root. Now, n of n is odd. What happens if n is odd? Well, here, we know what, what to do here. The opposite of cubing something is cube root. And I cube root that, and I get 27. Cube root of 27, rather, is 3. And well, is it 3 and negative 3? Is that a solution? Well, put negative 3 back in there. Negative 3 cubed is negative 27, and that's not a root. So if n is odd, there is one solution only. What's weird, it's still the nth root of a, right? But n might be 3 or 5 or 7 or something like that. And we'll see that it might not be positive. We'll see in this, in this lesson as well. Um, why does that make sense graphically? Well, if you remember what x cubed, y equals x cubed looks like, it starts low and ends high. And it's got a triple root there. That's y equals x cubed. Well, where is it equal to 27? Way down there. There's, there's y equals 27 right there. There's one solution. It's 3. That's it. Done. Um, I notice this question here, how many roots are there going to be? Well, I still know, uh, know that I'm going to take the cube root. And since it's a cube root, that's n is odd, there's only one solution and it's going to be negative 5. So what's the big deal there? Well, the big deal there is if this was x squared equals negative uh, 25, there are no solutions. There's no place where this graph gets to negative 25. But this one, where's negative 125? Well, it's down here somewhere. Right? That's fine and dandy. I can, sol I can solve that solution. So this has one solution. But this, these even ones have two solutions. And there will be some times here, I know, how do I get rid of uh, x to the exponent 4? Well, it's the fourth root. And 
this isn't a perfect root, so we've got to put that into our calculator. And I could put that in as a root like this, or if I prefer, I could put it in as this. However you like to put this into your calculator, you should get about 6.69. But since it's an even root, there's two solutions. Be careful there. So I could either write it as positive and negative 6.69 there, or I could write it as, you know, x equals 6.69 or x equals negative 6.69. Okay, either way like that. Onward. How are we doing for time? Good for time, I think. Now we're getting there. Just a few examples left. I'm going to keep pounding through this video. Um, did I miss some? No, we're good. This one's strange because this exponent, 3 halves, means this, doesn't it? And I'm going to go so it's kind of slow and stupid through this for a, for a reason. That's what that means, right? This means that. And so how would I get rid of an exponent 3? Well, it's going to be cube root, right? So I'm going to cube root this side. Cube root that side. Well, how do I get rid of a square root? So I'm left with x. Well, I square both sides. Right? Square both sides. And so now I can actually do this using our, our root rules and exponent rules. This is uh, 5 squared, which is 25. Notice, since the number on top is odd, we've only got one solution. One solution. X e equals 25. Now I want to show you something. I want to show you a different way to think about this one that's going to be nicer. What do we actually do here? Well, notice this expression right there. It was done as roots, and I and I went ahead and I used the, that fact, but that means this, doesn't it? So really, what I did in solving this question is I applied the exponent two thirds to both sides. Now let me go back and show what that means if I started with that idea. I apply the exponent two-thirds to both sides. Apply the exponent two-thirds to both sides. Well, notice what happens here. This becomes the right-hand side that we're used to, and I can just go ahead and use my radical rules there. But what happens over here? Well, those multiply, 6 over 6, that's x to the exponent 1. Where did the two-thirds come from? It was just the flip. It was the flip of the existence, the existing exponents. So what we did is we apply the flip exponent. And this is a flip exponent. No such thing. This is this is Restall copyright there. Trademark 2013. Never ever been uttered in math video done before. But I'm calling that the flip exponent. So we're going to apply the flip exponent to this in order to sort of save all of these steps. And I'll show you how slick this is. So what exponent is the flip exponent of 2 to the exponent, or 2 over 5? Well, it's the exponent that's going to get rid of the 2 and get rid of the 5. It's the flip exponent. See, those will cancel. Those will cancel. This will be x to the exponent 1, which is, a, which is what I want. But on this side, it's going to be five halves, right? I, I, I apply the, the flip exponent. Now this I can do, right? This is just the bottom thing is the, is the root, the top thing is the exponent, two fifths, or two to the exponent five is 32. Now is negative 32 a possible? Notice here, that's even so that means there's two solutions. 
when it's even, the top is even, the exponent here was even, that this could be also negative 32. And check that out on your calculator. The, there are two solutions, x equals 32 or x equals negative 32. And we can do this this sort of flip exponent thing with uh, with decimals as well. So what's the exponent I'm going to apply on both sides? Well, it's going to be the flip exponent, 8 thirds. And again, same as the three-minute review, I could, I could either put this version into my calculator or put that version into my calculator. Either way, I'm going to get x is 250, about 250.1, approximately using the calculator. Okay. I think there's a few questions from the textbook and a few questions on the, on the bottom of your sheet to do for homework. That's it. Make wise choices, MCT4C.